May 28, 2020, restarts global conference by 361 firm and alumni connecting. Hello and welcome to the 361 firm and alumni connecting joint web conference on restarts. We continue a dialogue among family offices and other investors, LPs and GPs, as we navigate the new investment landscape. This follows our three global and six deep dive web conferences since March 19th. And you will hear today from Nancy Lazar of Cornerstone Macro, sharing tons of data, several charts and slides on her views on this new and unique recovery. That Which is really the focus of my discussion today, is that on balance, the recovery slash expansion, we believe is going to be driven by the investment side of the equation, in particular, driven by onshoring, uh, which is going to be a major support for capital spending and also, uh, and also housing. So here I just highlight some of our main themes. We watch things very closely and we identify in this case five things that we think are helping us gauge uh, the unfolding recovery and they're all now pointing to a recovery. Consumers' confidence is stabilizing, uh, unemployment claims are declining, the credit markets are improving, the number of COVID cases are declining, and China was first in, first out, is also recovering. Here are the 12 reasons why we, we believe for onshoring or phase two of the U.S. manufacturing renaissance. I'm gonna go through some of these, but the point is it's not just one thing. It's not just one thing. We focus on more U.S. domestic companies versus global. Fastenal is a U.S. industrial company. Caterpillar is also U.S., but it's a global capital spending industrial company. Fastenal has clearly been outperforming, again, uh, because we are rebuilding this country as we did after World War II, uh, because of this change in the cost structure and doing business with, with China. Stephen Burke, do you want to, uh, you know, share your perspectives on this? And Next week, and we said there's really five things we think we need to do to have a better future. Um, following along with what uh, Mr. Paulson said, one is we actually have to plan better, and the state of Ohio has done a very good job of this. China has done a very good job of taking long-term planning and executing against it. As a nation, we have to do that. We have to have plans that last beyond an election cycle. For, for many companies, um, this, there's, a, there's a, a silly term which is going around called decoupling. Um, and, it, and again, it, it, you, you get a lot of immature sourcing people who are saying, get me out of China as quickly as possible. And from my perspective, it seems like a China plus one strategy or a China plus several other location strategies is probably the more prudent step to make. The African continent has not been hit too hard um, by the virus itself for a number of different reasons. Economically, it's been incredibly difficult because of uh, the reduction in the price of oil and, and gas and other natural resources, but also because of the fact that there's such a big portion of the economy which is informal. Um, Jobs Ohio was created uh, kind of in the ashes of the last downturn. 10 years ago, uh, the state legislature passed a bill to privatize economic development. And so as COVID-19 started to hit uh, the Midwest, um, this was our playbook um, and this was our strategy. Uh, again, we, we had a sector focused, we focus on those high sectors, uh, the sectors with high multipliers uh, where we have strength. Um, so it's a mix of goods and services and we'll get into that. Think of us as 300 million a year of impact investing in this framework. That, um, that effort led to a phased restart. So, you know, early May, uh, manufacturing, distribution, construction reopened. You know, by mid-May, consumer-facing retail was reopening. I'm going to take a little bit more of a, of a look at just particularly the automotive industry and try to set the stage for what we're looking at as traditional manufacturing and what we see as the future of manufacturing around the automotive space, which includes R&D and electrification. So just to set the stage on the automotive industry, um, Ohio has benefited from its location. From the state particularly, you can reach 77% of the North American automotive production within a one day's drive, which is about 600 miles. So that really sets the stage for understanding how the automotive industry has expanded and grown within Ohio. We're more of a startup than a restart, um, but a typical startup doesn't have a six million square foot factory and uh, a prototype vehicle and orders. And, and so kind of a hybrid there, but uh, essentially we purchased um, the Chevy cruise plant, uh, like I said, six million square feet uh, from General Motors, where they kind of abruptly just exited the small uh, sedan market that was a cruise. So we, we purchased it um, fully intact. Uh, 
We purchased this plant and we are retooling it to make electric pickup trucks. Uh, if you were to build this from scratch uh, with all the machinery inside, it's, it's well north of three billion, maybe four. Uh, so we focus on devices, um, but we've been affected directly both for good and bad in terms of stops and restarts. Um, Nottingham Spark is considered an essential business. So luckily our 60,000 square foot office and prototyping shop has been open, but not of all of our portfolio companies. So uh, if you think about our investment strategy, it's kind of like a barbell. It's either really, really early or very mature. Um, and we do a lot of tech transfer incubation. And some of our early stage companies, like I said, have been disadvantaged or advantaged in this situation. It's had stops, starts, restarts. But, uh, you know, so the pandemic has affected not even for, for both good and bad. But we have an expression internally, which is adapt or die. If you don't stay sharp and innovate yourself, you're going to be out innovated. Uh, financial services is the second largest CapEx investor after manufacturing. So again, this is the space that's super important to consider and particularly with how the financial